Okay, so by now, hopefully you've watched the first video in this section that talks about the definitions of concave up and concave down. So if you haven't done that, you should watch that video first before uh, looking at this one. So assuming you've already watched that video, we're going to look at two examples in this video. And they give us a graph, and they want us to use the graph to indicate intervals of concavity, and then also if there's any inflection point or points. So first, let's look at concave up. Now concave up is talking about where the graph opens up. So I see here that this section of the graph, this would be opening down, and then this section of the graph is opening up. So concave up, just from reading it from the graph, we're gonna say, we're gonna write this in interval notation, where you're gonna indicate the x values for which the graph is opening up, and that would be from one to infinity. So this goes up forever, graph is opening up, so from one to infinity it's considered to be concave up. Concave down is where it's opening down. That's going to go from negative infinity to positive one. Notice that at one I'm actually not including it at all because we can't say if one's included on concave up or concave down. What it actually is is that's your inflection point. So these are given as intervals but the inflection point has to be given as a coordinate x comma y. We're going to read that off the graph and that coordinate is 1 comma 0. So again this is not interval notation, this is actually uh, as a coordinate. x value is 1, the y value is 0, so that's why the 1 is not included and you should be using parentheses when you indicate your concavity. So now let's take a look at another example. Okay, so here's a second example graph that's given here. What we notice about that is there's a vertical asymptote at x is equal to zero. We're looking for where it's concave up and concave down. Again, concave up means the graph is curving or opening up. That actually would be happening right here in the first section. So when I indicate the interval on this, it's going to be from negative infinity to zero. And this time for sure, zero can't be included because we have a vertical asymptote. There's no points that are actually defined. So definitely for sure, you need to make sure you have a parenthesis on that zero. Concave down is this part right here. On this section, uh, it is opening down, so it's going to be from zero to infinity. Now, what you might be thinking is that there's got to be an inflection point at zero because that's where the concavity changes because the last example we just did with the other graph, we had the concavity changing at one. Well, inflection point, again, has to be a point that's actually defined on the original graph. And if you have a vertical asymptote here, that means at zero, it's not defined on the original function. So in this case, for inflection points, you're going to say none. So I wanted to show you this example because there's a, there are some situations that you're going to come up with in future problems where you'll see the concavity changing, but at that particular point, it's not defined on the original one, so we can't say that's going to be an inflection point. So we're going to take a look at some examples later on in this section where that happens. What would happen there is you would have a, your sign chart. You'd have a plus, in this case, you'd have a plus and a minus, dividing it up at zero. But because zero is not defined in the original one, it's not considered an inflection point. So again, that's why there's none here in this case.